Hello everyone. In the previous session, we have discussed about uh, definition, that is electrochemistry, types of conductors. Further, we studied about uh, types of uh, uh, that is metallic conductors, electrolytic conductors. Even we studied about the differences between metallic and electrolytic conductors. And uh, the next uh, part, we considered uh, types of electrolytes, that is strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte. We considered definitions and examples. And the, for, at the last we considered even non-electrolytes, the one which uh, do not undergo dissociation, they are considered as a non-electrolyte. Now, as we said, two types of conductors, metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors. And second type, when we think of the second type, electrolytic conductors, uh, the name, they are also named as a ionic conductors. Here, there are few factors. The factors which influences ions and the factors are going to affect electrolytic conductors. I can say electrolytic conductors are even it is named as a ionic conductors. There are certain list of factors. They are going to influence the electrolytic conductors. Well, what are those factors means? We can list out five factors. First one, nature of the electrolyte added. As we know about Strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte specifies the nature of the electrolyte. Means that electrolyte may be strong or it may be weak. And we know about strong electrolyte undergo complete dissociation, while weak electrolyte undergo partial dissociation. Which means electrolyte are of different nature. It will be strong or weak. So how that nature of electrolyte is going to affect electrolytic conductance? is studied with respect to first factor that is nature of electrolyte added what type of electrolyte is added whether we added strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte so this is the first factor second factor size of the ion produced and their solvation means when electrolyte is added to suitable solvent what happens it splits into constituent ions once ions form, all ions are going to have their size, that is ionic radii. Whether ionic radii of all the ions are same? No, they have different size. Means ionic radius of one ion differs from another. Means they have a different size. Well, that size is going to affect the electrolytic conductance. Further, their salvation, which means here, this is the phenomenon. Solvation is general term. Is the phenomenon in which what happens? Ions are get surrounded by solvent molecules. The phenomenon in which ions are being get surrounded by solvent molecules is referred as a solvation. Now here, there is a change in the degree of solvation, or I can say extent of solvation. Generally, means. Based on the charge to mass ratio, or I can say effective nuclear charge. Based on the effective nuclear charge of the ion, what happens? The degree of solvation changes. If nuclear charge is more, that is effective nuclear charge is more, degree of solvation is more. If effective nuclear charge is less, degree of solvation is less. So, is in turn going to affect the electrolytic conductor? So, the second, size of the ions produced and their salvation is also going to influence the heat of the electrolytic conduct. Second, then the third one, nature of the solvent and its viscosity is the third factor. Nature of the solvent and its viscosity. Well, here, if I think of, when I think of nature of solvent, say, basically, solvents are categorized into two types. Aqueous solvent, non aqueous solvent, or I can say organic solvent, and further based on its dipole movement, we can say polar and non polar solvents. So, solvents, if I consider nature, we can say that solvent may be polar solvent or it may be non polar solvent. It specifies the that is polar and non polar nature specifies the nature of a solvent. Further, its viscosity. Well, all liquids are going to have different viscosity. They have different viscosity. Therefore, 
the nature of solvent and its viscosity is going to influence the electrolytic conductors. And the fourth one, concentration of the electrolyte. So here, here concentration refers to quantity of electrolyte added. Quantity of electrolyte added to the solvent is going to influence the or affect the electrolytic conductors. And the last one, temperature. So these are the five factors. Nature of the electrolyte added, size of the ion produced and its solution, nature of the solvent and its viscosity, concentration of the electrolyte and fifth one, temperature. So these five factors, these are the five major factors which affect the electrolytic conductors. Coming to the first one, that is nature of electrolyte. As I already mentioned here, nature of electrolyte means it is the whether the electrolyte is strong or weak. Before going from that, right, we know the concept. Strong electrolyte undergo complete dissociation. On the other hand, weak electrolyte undergo partial dissociation. Well, if strong electrolyte undergo complete dissociation, what happens? More ions will be produced. Weak electrolyte undergo partial dissociation, so less number of ions produced. So here basically the electrolytic conductance depends. Electrolytic conductance depends on the number of ions present in a solution phase. Now we can say where the number of ions will be more. Obviously, in case of solution of a strong electrolyte. In case of solution of a strong electrolyte, number of ions will be more and its conduction is more. But if I think solution of a weak electrolyte, what happens? Number of ions will be less and its conduction is less. Therefore, we get a statement here. A solution of strong electrolyte conducts more. A solution of strong electrolyte conducts more than the solution of a weak electrolyte. Okay? They will ask in the form of reason. Give reason. The solution of strong electrolyte conducts more than the solution of a weak electrolyte. What is the reason here? In case of solution of a strong electrolyte, the electrolyte undergo complete dissociation and produces more number of ions. Hence, conductance is more. Well, in case of solution of weak electrolyte, the electrolyte undergo partial dissociation and produces less number of ions and its conduction is less. Okay? So, nature of the electrolyte concerned. Solution of a strong electrolyte conducts more than the solution of a weak electrolyte. So, is the first factor. Coming to the second one. The so second factor is the size of the ions produced and their solution. Is the second factor. Size of the ions produced and their solution. Well, here, the electrolytic conductance the electrolytic conductance depends on the mobility of the ions in a solution phase. So what we are saying, the electrolytic conductance depends on the mobility of ions in the solution phase. Which means, when you think of mobility of the ion, it in turn depends on the size. Means, smaller the size, what happens? Greater is the mobility, while larger the size, lesser is the mobility so that we can say here the relation between size and mobility or i can say mobility and size how they are related inversely related larger the size lesser is the mobility and vice versa so if mobility is more further if mobility is more what happens conduction is more mobility is less conduction is less so smaller the ions produced smaller the ions produced, greater is the electrolytic conductance and the vice versa. Which means, larger the ions produced, lesser is the electrolytic conductance. What is the reason for this? Smaller the size of ion produced, larger is the mobility. Means, if whatever ions produced, if size is very small, what happens? Its mobility is very high. If mobility is high, is conducts more. On the other hand, if size of the ions produced is very large, what happens? Its mobility is very less, therefore conduction is also less. 
So we say smaller the size of ions produced, larger is the mobility and conduction is more. While larger the size of ions produced, lesser is their mobility and conduction is less. So it is regarding size, size of the ions produced. Further, and their solvation. Well, how solvation is going to affect the electrolytic conductor means electrolytic conductance is inversely related to degree of solvation. So here, as I said, solvation, the ion is get surrounded by solvent molecules. When ion is get surrounded by solvent molecules, what happens? Size of the resultant ion. Earlier, only the ion is present. But when it is get surrounded by solvent molecules, what happens? Sphere, size of the sphere increases. It means size of the resultant ion increases. If ion is get solvated, size of the solvated ion increases. If size increases, or the you know, mobility decreases, and its conduction also decreases. So we can say electrolytic conductance is inversely related to degree of solvation. Reason. As degree of solvation increases, size of the resultant ion increases, its mobility decreases, and its conductance decreases. While as degree of solvation decreases, size of the resultant ion decreases, mobility increases, and its conductance increases. So overall, what is to be remembered here? The electrolytic conductance is inversely related to degree of solvation of ions. Coming to the third factor, that is nature of solvent and its viscosity. Well, as we mentioned here, nature of solvent means that solvent may be polar or non-polar. So, when you think of polar and non-polar solutions, say so polar solutions conduct more than the non-polar solutions. So, for example, a sodium chloride added to water, on the other hand, sodium chloride added to benzene. See here. Salt is same, that is electrolyte added is same, sodium chloride and sodium chloride, say 1 gram in each case. Means same quantity of electrolyte is added into two different types of solvents, that is one is water, another one is benzene. Say dissolving 1 liter of water, in second case 1 liter of benzene, and when we measure the conductance, what we observe? Conductance of solution of sodium chloride in water will be more compared to solution of sodium chloride in benzene. What is the real reason here? In case of water, that is salt in water, both are like both are polar in nature. So polar solution, its conductance will be more than the non-polar solutions. The reason here, in case of polar solutions, what we said? Dissociation of electrolyte is more. In case of polar solvent or in case of polar solutions, dissociation of electrolyte is more, hence conductance is more. While in case of non-polar solutions, dissociation of electrolyte will be less, hence conductance is less. It is regarding the nature of a solvent. So, overall, if solvent is polar, conductance is more. If solvent is non-polar, conductance is less. Okay. Then coming to the viscosity of the solvent. So electrolytic conductance is inversely related to viscosity of the solution. So why this so means? Since electrolytic conductance depends on the mobility of the ions. Mobility of ions in solution phase. This mobility depends on the viscosity. Mobility of ions depends entirely depends on the viscosity of that medium. If it is more viscous, what happens? Mobility in turn will be is going to experience more in terms of mobility. Means if viscosity is very high, if viscosity of the solution is high, what happens? Mobility of ions will be less or decreases and conductance is less. On the other hand, if viscosity is very low, what happens? Mobility of ions is very high, so conductance will be more. Therefore, how they are related means both are inversely related. Electrolytic conductance is inversely related to viscosity of a solution. Is the statement. The reason in highly viscous solution, mobility of ions is less, hence conductance is less. While in low viscous solution, 
mobility of ions is more, hence conductance is also more. It is regarding third factor, nature of solvent and its viscosity. Then coming to the fourth factor, concentration of electrolyte, that is quantity of electrolyte added into the solvent. So in case of solution of a strong electrolyte, so what I am specifying? In case of solution of a strong electrolyte, as concentration increases, conductance decreases. In case of solution of a strong electrolyte, as concentration increases, conductance decreases. So, are they similarly if you consider in case of solution of a weak electrolyte, as concentration increases, conductance decreases. Which means overall, if you think of concentration of electrolyte, how it is related? Inversely proportional. Higher the concentration, less is the conductance. But reason is different. The reason is different for strong electrolyte and solution of a weak electrolyte. Well, in case of solution of a strong electrolyte, in case of solution of a strong electrolyte, as concentration increases, conductance decreases. The reason for this is it is due to increase in the interionic interaction. In case of strong electrolyte, conductance decreases due to increase in the interionic interaction, which means, say, in case of strong electrolyte, if you add more quantity of strong electrolyte, what happens? There will be large number of ions present. So, while moving, while moving, what happens? Ions started colliding with each other. So, what? Resultant or I can say net the mobility of ions decreases. Okay, there will be large number of ions. One can think that as number of ions increases, conductance should be increased. But here, what happens? Due to increasing their number, the number of collisions among the ions increases. So net the mobility decreases. Therefore, conductance decreases. Well, in case of solution of a weak electrolyte, here what happens? Again, we said as concentration increases, conductance decreases. The reason behind it is due to decrease in the degree of dissociation. In case of solution of a weak electrolyte, conductance decreases due to decrease in the degree of dissociation. So, it is regarding concentration of an electrolyte that is perfect. Well, coming to the fifth one, that is the last factor, temperature. We already mentioned electrolytic conductance is directly related to temperature. It means increase in temperature, conductance increases. If you decrease the temperature, electrolytic conductance decreases. Why we are specifying this directly means, say, if you increase the temperature, what happens? There will be increase in the there will be increase in the degree of dissociation of a electrolyte. So, there is a reason as temperature increases, degree of dissociation of electrolyte increases, hence conductance increases. So, we see already the factors which affect the electrolytic conductance. What are the factors to consider? Nature of the electrolyte added. Second one, nature of the solvent and its viscosity. Third one, size of the ions produced in their solution. Fourth one, concentration of the electrolyte. And fifth one, temperature. I hope you understood these factors. In the next session, we will talk about some other things. Thank you.